Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look at reducing noise. That crusty stuff that appears when your ISO is really high, you're shooting in low light or at night time. We're going to go from this to this. Nice. And once we've done noise reduction, which is relatively easy, there's a few little tips and tricks for it. We're going to go a bit further and add a mask to sharpen up the really interesting parts of the owl that might have been lost through the noise reduction. So have a look at them. So we're going to go from this that's had the noise reduced and enhance it by making his eyes pop like this. Ooh, handsome bird. Before, after, nice. We'll also look at adding a mask to the background. Ooh, to really kind of separate him from the background. And we're going to practice masks, but also look at some of the problems when you are masking something uh, using some of the AI features that has a bunch of noise. Doesn't always work, but I'll show you a way around it. All right, friend, let's get in there. I promised myself I wouldn't say make it pop in this whole course. <laughs> it just popped out there. Ooh, double pop. Okay, first up, we should have an album from earlier called Ruru. Okay, that's our owl. Uh, these are JPEGs from earlier, and we can work on those, but uh, as we know now, uh, raw files will have a bit more information to clean up our noisy images. So let's add those. I'm going to drag them straight from the exercise file. Okay, there is a folder called uh, noise, so 08 noise, and bring in these two. Drag them in. Let's add them. And we're going to open them up. That's why sometimes it's better, to, like I'm normally on this view for grid view, okay? Uh, and then there's this other option, which is a bit more Q squarey, but you can actually see CR3 is Canon's kind of newish uh, raw file format. We don't want the JPEG. So I'm going to pick this one here. Open it up. Now this shot here, shot at night. Okay, it's got a chunk of noise. It's pretty nice. But let's see what we can do to get rid of as much noise as possible. Let's also have a look at the I key, just to see what the ISO is. Not crazy high, but still introducing a lot of noise. Now we're going to flick between 100% and 200% in this one. Okay, because it kind of gets in a lot of the detail of the bird. Um, clicking and dragging to move around. So we're going to toggle between 100, fit, and 200. You can't just work in one when you're dealing with this noise. You've got to kind of see it from a few different vantage points. Now, what you'll notice is if we hit E for editing, uh, if you go down to this details panel, okay, so we've been in light, color, I twirl them up just to keep them nice and tidy. If you go into details, there is actually some noise reduction going on by default. Okay, Lightroom adds a chunk of color noise reduction, 25 and sharpening to counteract that. So whenever we add a bunch of noise reduction, it's actually, I'll show you on this one. So there's color noise and then there's noise, kind of black and white noise. If I crank that right up, everything gets really smooth. Okay, so um, it's really common to counteract that with sharpening, okay? To a degree, you don't want to crank them all both up. So I'm going to reset that. Who remembers how to reset this whole little panel? Remember, you don't. Oh, let's hold down the Option key or Alt key on a PC and you can just click up there. All right, so we're back. So there is noise in there, colored noise. Let's go in even further. So let's go into like 300, just to have a look. Can you see all the colored specs? If I double click that to put it back, before, after, before, after. Can you see it there? Um, so color noise is gone. It's easy to get rid of because Lightroom does it for us. Uh, what's trickier is how much to get rid of this other grain. Okay, or noise. Now, what we're going to do here is I want to keep a good detail, like that eye is a pretty nice detail. And the trouble at the moment is that it's all quite dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to light and hit the, actually, I don't even have to, go to the auto option, just to do some auto uh, contrast. And, you know, I can definitely go back and work on this afterwards, but I need to get rid of a chunk of the noise first. Okay, so I'm just going to hit auto. Okay, and then I'm going to use this to work through. Okay, so how much noise reduction? All of it, but it gets really milky. So there's just a balance of like back and forth. It's okay to have noise. And I think we say that because, <laughs> because there is noise, uh, but you know, a little bit of noise doesn't wreck the image. It's not like pixelization, you know, where it's all kind of blocky and gross. It is just a bit of real life noise that happens in these really low lights. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is find this medium. I'm looking at this edge. This contrast is a really good one, plus the eye because I want to get rid of it, but also I don't want the eyes to go all milky. Okay, so there is a there is a, a, a balance or a trade-off between milkiness and noise reduction. Okay, so I'm going to go sharpening up a little bit as well. You can see it crank it right up. It's not what I want. I just want to increase the sharpening a little bit as I increase the noise reduction. And once you play with it a little bit, don't spend too long. Make sure you jump out to fit, okay, and then toggle this on and off, on and off. And I can see it going, can you? 
might be a little harder from far away. Who remembers how to go to full screen? F, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I second guess myself, I was like asking you. I'm like, oh, is it F? I tapped it, we did it. <laughs> okay, so this, uh, you know, this is as large as it can be on my screen. It's quite big, got a big 29 inch. Um, so it's great for that. Also 100%, okay, that's as, as, you know, before it actually starts zooming past it and start seeing pixels, this is as good as it's gonna get. But also we wanna get into the nitty gritty, so either 200 or 300%. Depending on your image, I need to see the giant owl eye. Now, if you want to get fancier, okay, and often we do with noise reduction, like this one's a pretty good example, pretty nice example, um, but there, you're gonna have worse images where you've got to do a bit more work, okay? And um, these features here all have this drop down. They're pretty advanced, but I don't get into them too much, except for noise reduction, okay? There is a bit of extra stuff you can do. So noise reduction up and down, and then you can drag detail up and down, okay? And it's just like another level, okay, to our noise reduction. Okay, we can add more detail in, okay, or back out again. And this will differ depending on every image. There's no like magic number, okay, but it gives you a little bit of extra control. And the other thing with that control is I'm gonna go in a little bit further, I'm gonna go 300, is that it's sometimes hard to see when it's all colorful because we wanna get rid of the noise. And the noise is not colorful, it's just this like contrast, lights and darks speckled everywhere. So what we can do is we're getting advanced, prepare yourselves, roll your shoulders, I'm doing it. Okay, we're gonna hold down the option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC, okay? And what's gonna happen is it's not gonna reset it, which it does for all these other ones. It, that same key allows me to drag detail. And you can see it just pulls all the color out. And often that can be easier to see you, know, you just keep dragging until you start seeing those artifacts. Can you see all those like goop, okay? That's the technical term, goop, okay? Where it all just gets a bit splodgy, another technical word. Okay, well, you wanna just go where you find it and then come back a little bit, okay? Then you can let go of that Alt key on a PC, Option key on a Mac, before, after, before, after. It's pretty amazing how far you can get, but the balance always is how soft the image will get. Okay, same with contrast. Okay, hold down the Option key, drag it up. Splodgy again, different kind of splodgy, splodgy too. Okay, there's not a lot I can do before it starts. I'm keeping an eye out here, it's a little bit more obvious out there, can you see it? You have a play around with it as well. It feels like for me, you know, actually to be honest, there's not much different in contrast. Like up and down, there's a little bit, okay, but the noise comes so much with it that I'm not gonna do anything with it, okay? This is different for all images, okay? And how high the ISO is, how much noise you have, is it full dark? Or is it like this, pretty dark, but <laughs> not full dark? Okay, so let's twirl that back up, okay? So any of these sliders inside Lightroom are collapsible. So if you are transitioning from something like uh, Lightroom Classic and you like that full control, they're just hiding them up, okay? Just to give you kind of really good overall settings. And if you do wanna dive in a bit more, you can get into them this way. They all have it. Also, you can drag the uh, overall slider by holding down that Alt or Option key as well, okay? And it gives you just a really nice contrast. I can really see it there. Getting perfect, but I know perfect means milky, so I'm gonna find that balance of there. Oh, a little bit more. All right, before, after, before, after. Okay, so if you came for noise reduction, that's kind of it. I'm gonna show you some other tricks and tie in some other other skills to try and uh, get back, wow, to enhance this image, okay, before, after. The auto was good, okay, did some great stuff to my actual subject, but it's kind of overexposed the um, background here, okay, it's a bit too light. And also another little trick is, especially on, you're like, this bird's perfect with its really kind of striking eyes and you know all these really interesting feathers in here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw in a mask and accentuate this and then push the background back because we know how to do masks now. What I might do is look at the auto settings that went in here and I'm looking at my owl. Okay, what it was good. Was it good? Oh, just deciding what, <laughs> what I need to change. Actually, it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now I'm gonna add a mask. I'm gonna just close all these up. I'm gonna go masking tool. What kind of mask? There's no like owl mask. Okay, there's a subject, but I don't want the whole subject. I just want this kind of T cross section of his face. Okay, so I'm just gonna use the brush tool. Okay, and I'm gonna say brush size. 
Okay, I'm back. What happened? Uh, my machine kind of crashed and died. Here we go. <laughs> um, so I'm going to close that down. Where were we? Um, so I'm going to go to the brush. Got to this. Okay, that was all missing, and then I started clicking, and it all just went went away. <laughs> okay, so we've done our noise reduction. Let's just check it's still still there. Light is there. The details. Remember, a really good option is under these two. Okay, the eyeball means something's happened in light. Something's happened in color, something's happened in detail. We haven't done anything in these other three. So mask time, brush time, the size wise. Now I end up using this slide is fine. Okay, but what you can do is I use the scroll wheel on my mouse and just kind of wind it back and forth. If you don't have a scroll wheel, drag it over here. If you have the scroll wheel, wind it back in and, in and out. So we're going to paint the bird, actually just paint across its T section. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make one that's kind of the size of its eye. Okay, I'm going to paint there, there, and kind of in there, and I, I like these things here. And I like it nice and fluffy, that's why I've got a big brush, because I don't want it to be very, um, to, to have too hard edges. I want it to be kind of nice and fluffy. Ooh, I don't like those guys. Show pins and tools. Okay. All right, so um, we've got it. Let's go and I'm just going to work on my mask. Okay, you might have to scroll down for it. Okay, you should see mask here. If you have, if you don't, uh, click on mask and click on this option here, mask. And we're just going to do. I'm not sure yet. Okay. <laughs> I'm probably not going to do with the exposure. Maybe a tiny. No, I'm going to leave exposure okay. Uh, all right, and probably do it with the rest of these. So. I have to come back to contrast because it's not doing a whole lot there. I'm going to be at a hundred percent. Okay, so much in that one. I'm just looking for some contrast, especially on the eyes, but also across those feathers. Now I've got it, I can come back and maybe do a bit of contrast. No, it's losing too much detail. That's probably him here. I'll probably pull the whites down. The feathers are getting too much. Okay, we're going to do the mask on and off. So let's turn the eyeball on and off. Just, to, can you see? Oh, look at his eyes pop. Those kind of middle feathers as well, nice. Let's go back to fit and let's just make sure it's not too glaringly obvious. What you can do, remember the whole mask can come down. So I've done some adjustments to it, but you can say, actually, I'm just going to pull the mask back a little bit. Okay. So everything that I've done here is just going to be toned down a little bit by that amount. There's a little, look at that, big popping. You can go up and a little bit more of it. Actually, I was happy where it was. What I also might do is just warm it up. So you, just a little bit, before, before, after, before, after. <laughs> you gotta click and hold it then. All right, I like it. Um, let's do one more mask because I'll show you some problems you might run into with noise and trying to do a mask. So let's add another mask, so in mask, okay. I'm going to create a new mask and select subject is Probably not going to work. Let's have a look. Um, so I'm going to zoom in. Okay, maybe what are we going to do? 200%. Okay, and it looks like it's done a pretty good job, but because it's noisy, let's have a look. Let's invert the mask. Okay, can you see there? It's all gone a bit scraggly around there because it's quite noisy and the background's starting to blend into him. So if I go in to make adjustments, can you see it's. Um, just not a great fit because of the noise. If I had maxed out the noise reduction, I probably would get a better mask. Try it first, because that's a good way to get started and just kind of invert it and just do some crazy stuff to see whether the mask is gonna be passable. This isn't, so I'm gonna say, you, my friend, are going to be, I right clicked it, I'm gonna say delete. So we're gonna paint them in the long way, okay? So I'm going to go to fit and I am going to go to a new mask. I'm gonna say brush. Good old brush. Okay, I'm going to paint him in because he's easier and then invert it. So I'm going to start with a nice big brush just to paint up his middle. Okay, and remember with my brush over here, okay, I've got the size up. 
the feather I have got cranked up, the flow I've got cranked up to maximum just to save time. Okay, just to save time. When I get to the edges, I'll do something slightly different. So just paint them in. Shrink the brush down either with the slider or I'm using, remember, my mouse wheel. And now I'm going to go and do a really quick pass around his edge. So I'm going to zoom in. Hold down my command key on a Mac, control key on a PC and to zoom in to something like this. Brush size, I'm going to, I don't know, that looks good. Okay, and I'm just going to color it in. And the feather, I'm going to lower down just a little bit because he has a pretty distinctive edge. It's not too fluffy. Okay, you have to play around with like, it comes with a little bit of experience, like that's not really sharp. If it was like a box, okay, we might lower it down, you know, the, um, can't talk and paint, uh, lower down the feather even more. They have a really sharp edge, okay, really definitive edge, but he's quite a long distance away and there's a lot of noise. He's got feathers, he's not a box. Okay, so I'm just gonna work my way around Make my brush size bigger and smaller, hold my spacebar key and drag it around and color them in. Okay, this is gonna take a little while. I'm gonna fast forward it and the editor will pause it if I think of anything like genius to talk about. All right, genius, um, uh, hold down the option key to remove parts. If you go over the edges, oh no, colored over the lines, hold down the option key on a Mac or key on a PC and get rid of it. Now, the other thing I wanna to add to you is I'm not being particularly good here because I know whatever I do is gonna be wrong. Okay, and I'll show you what that means at the moment. Um, so I'm just gonna finish coloring this in, space bar to move around, a bigger brush, kind of smaller brush to the edges and then I can color in this kind of gap here. I'm gonna zoom out using a different shortcut, Command minus, kind of just takes a step out, Control minus on a PC, because now I can get out to here and go, actually, I can color in over here. All right, fast mode again. All right, why did he say don't worry about it? Well, because what you can do is, with this mask selected, okay, you can say, Show me not a color overlay, but show me on all these different options. Okay, you can see on white. <laughs> Look how badly I did that. It looks fine in red. Okay, but I'm going to do it on white and paint the rest of this in. Okay, <laughs> you wait there. All right, and um, the other th little tip is that when I'm kind of coloring in this chunk, you know, the edge needs to be nice and feathered. Uh, when I get down here, I lower the feathered quite a, quite a bit, so that I'm kind of painting in a nice bit more of a block, just to make sure everything's gone. Ooh, there we go. Fit. Okay, there's my mask. Not perfect, but good enough. Okay, and what we're going to do now is turn it back to our color overlay, and we're going to invert it. Okay, so we're gonna go invert, because I wanna actually lower the background. It was just easier to paint the bird in than it was to paint the whole background. You can paint the background if you like. It takes a long time. Okay, there's a little bit across there, isn't there? Oh, so now I've inverted it, I have to hold down the option key to remove anything from the bird. There's little bits of red in the bird, which is, oh, which is uh, interesting. It's making my uh, mask go badly. All right. All of that so that I could grab my mask, okay, and just lower the exposure. Now, with a mask, be prepared, there might be a little bit of ghosting around the outside. So, it depends on how much you wanna work on it. I don't wanna do too much, like in terms of the exposure and like playing, you know, making the background darker, okay. I'm probably gonna to go too far and then lower the amount afterwards. So just kind of, I'm gonna work through it. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, so there's dark bits on the bird, which looks like a bad mask, but uh, just parts of the bird. Let's turn the mask on and off. He's quite dark on the edges there. Okay, um, but the ghosting around here, we need to get rid of. 
So now I'm going to work on my mask. So I'm gonna go from here to my mask, make sure I'm working on this mask. And what I'm gonna do is zoom in. I'm gonna go into 300%. I'm not gonna go in that far, I'm gonna go in 200%. And what I'm gonna do is, do I want to be uh, adding to it or removing from it? That is the key. I might turn it on so I can see it. Actually, no, let's turn it off. Okay, and I wanna add to it, because it's red, I wanna add more red, kind of push in a little bit, just get rid of that ghosting. So I'm gonna make sure my flow's up, my feather's up, size-wise, and then, can you see I can just kind of, just rub the edges. I wanna go too far into him, because we don't wanna go all the way into him, because it'll make him dark, it'll you know bring that mask, that darker exposure in. Okay, but I can just go and touch it up. That's why I don't spend too much time getting it perfect on the, um, you know, when I'm kind of coloring the bird in, it's because I can touch up what's actually obvious later on, because there's some parts that you could spend ages fixing, but there's just no need to. That's great. This bit here doesn't, this bit in here needs a little bit of work. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go about my merry way again, going around, checking for any ghosting. Here we go. All right, back to fit. Nope, in for more ghosting. All right, I like it, and I'm just gonna lower the amount a bit. Okay, and let's turn the eyeball off on that mask. Okay, so big change, Oh, I like it. And like always, I'm gonna go back to my main one, I'm gonna go back to my effects, and I'm going to add a little bit of a vignette to pull it into the middle as well. All right, so we started with looking at reducing grain. That wasn't particularly hard. You've got to remember those little tricks, okay, where we can hold down the Option key on a Mac or key on a PC to kind of convert it to black and white so we can get a better look at what's going on. You need to be okay with a bit of noise because to get rid of it all, it gets a little bit milky. And then we moved on to kind of enhancing little bits with a mask because we can now with our sweet masking skills. And we learned that with a chunk of noise, some of the AI masking options need a little bit of extra help, like spending five minutes painting uh, <laughs> painting your owl red. You've got to decide what its purpose is. If this is an art print, then sure, probably spend half an hour, an hour painting in the mask, getting it perfect, make sure you're getting rid of the ghosting. If this is going out small on Instagram, I betcha I probably get away with that automatic subject mask and nobody would know. Now to practice your newfound skills, we have got one from earlier on. If we go to um, all photos and type in our sweet bird, okay, I know it's called uh, where we are or the dad bird, okay, but not everyone knows that, but we know it's a bird, so we can find it hopefully. Go to all photos, mine's stuck, <laughs> stuck on the owl. Uh, let's go to G, yeah, oh, back. Uh, so all photos, and we can say bird, bird, please. And there we are. Okay, look for the ones, not the JPEG, look for the um, the ones that are Canon RAW files. Okay, and again, these are shot really early in the morning, and we did some auto settings, but what you can do is you can right click them and actually say, actually open one of them, which one do we want? Oh, that one's cool. Uh, is to reset it. So Command R and start again with this one. And what you'll notice is if you get into it quite deep, you'll see there's a bit of noise in here. Okay, something that you can practice cleaning up. Look how cool that is. Ooh, let's have a practice. You don't need to submit these ones. Just another good example to work with. All right, that is the end of the video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, give it a like. It helps me out. Uh, also subscribe to the channel because there's lots more Lightroom content where that came from. Uh, if you are sitting there thinking though, I wish you'd just do a course, you know, take me from zero to hero all the way through Lightroom and show me everything. Oh, you're in luck. Uh, I've got something called the Lightroom Essentials course. There'll be a link to it in the description here. Uh, so check that out if you want to go from zero to hero in Lightroom. But for now, carry on. Like and subscribe.